So I've been requested by a politician to share with you things that have happened to me in Champaign, Illinois and Urbana that I didn't expect to happen. I think I told you that I actually left my incarceration, which was not something fun for me, after three months of being held in a tower by a bitch courtesan uh, whose name doesn't matter right now, but a female judge who just thought she'd place my whole life on hold because I didn't satisfy something she wanted in her mind when I actually did so. But she was trying to force me into having to take some sort of drugs, and I didn't want to do that. So the answer was no to her. But after I left, I walked through Indiana literally from Indianapolis across the state line to Champaign, Illinois. I had help with only two people. I sort of pooped out in a, here at Cornfield, and a loving couple, who I think might have been related to someone I love, picked me up and drove me 20 minutes across a interstate highway, and then dropped me off in a place whose name I can't even remember, and I stopped and I got some food and I continued my journey. And then one Day that it was sort of marvelously rainy and wet, a gentleman who works on the campus here at the University of, Indi of Illinois picked me up to take me the last 40 minutes of my journey. And it was sort of nice. And I see him from time to time on campus, and we always greet each other. And I'm always grateful for him helping me to save my heart because all that walking from one state to the next was hard for me. I had to walk because police officers stole my fully paid for vehicle. You see, it was entitled in my business name, and under federal law, they should not have been able to touch it, because my vehicle was not being investigated for any crime, but what the officer Combs, a, a blonde-haired, blue-eyed, uh, butch lesbian, allegedly based on her behavior and performance and the way she walked her life in front of me, decided that because of the valuables in my car out there near, uh, I believe you could say almost Castleton, at 96th Street, where it was parked, being pulled over in a steak and shake lot, she felt that she should impound my car. Technically, she should not have been able to do that, and I had already gotten permission from the black manager there that I could leave it there as long as I needed. But I didn't get that opportunity because someone else took away my right to say no in that moment. She also took from me hard drives that were in a bag, separate from my computer, and put it in her car. That, too, was a violation of my rights. But as a person being undressed by a man named Stiles and taken from and then thrown in a paddy wagon where I was bounced around the whole way down to Marion County Jail, I didn't appreciate that. Maybe that was the first time in my experience. Maybe it was the second time in my experience. It doesn't matter. But when I finally got here after walking here, I made my way around the campus. And during the time of being on campus, I had my hands painted with some chemical that turned them into pox all over my hands, and I have photographs of that on my Twitter account. I had my brand new boots that I purchased at Walmart with my own earned money, that they were only maybe $17, actually have the insoles stolen out of them when I took them off to set them down next to me where I had been sleeping in a teeny little space off a really nice family-owned Chinese shop. And the next few days I couldn't figure out why my feet were hurting, but I didn't expect that someone had stolen my insoles, but that's what happened to me. Then I found myself a little place to stay around 2nd and Green. And for the most part, everybody there was reasonably kind, but there was always a player who was trying to pretend like he owned me. And that came from a black haircutting shop person, and that came from uh, students and people who were workers around the community. But I still had a buddy named Jesse who helped me. But the bottom line is, when I was in there, I was collecting items out of the trash that I could sell for my wife or give to my future wife for the upcoming Christmas holidays. And openly what happened to me there was a Hispanic man, Latino man, who spoke no language, maybe it's Honduran. When I came back late one night, he was actually sleeping in my bed. It was kind of like the three bears, that story. And he had totally, utterly destroyed all my organization in that space. And I took photographs of that and I put it on Twitter. So after that, what happened is I came back and some white man, late probably 50s, early 60s, maintenance possibly leader, can't say that for sure, took all my things out of there and threw them in the trash, according to him. So I moved myself to sleep elsewhere, and I slept outside because it was really cold and the snow was just starting to fall at that time. I slept outside of an audio engineering building on campus because on campus there's supposed to be diversity, and we're supposed to not have to be faced with perversity. But each night that I was there, there was some white man who was trying to touch me, touch my property, and I didn't like that. But one morning I woke up, when God said, time to get up, literally, 
two minutes before I was attacked by this black child of Satan, and he was technically black, and probably in his late teens, early twenties. And I had had trouble and difficulty with him before, where he had slapped me in the face because I was not willing to be his slave and obey him at a bus stop, where he yelled at me to get myself back into that bus stop. I simply got out of the bus stop as the Lord's request, and maybe it was to tro show me an experience of what white men receive from the black community. And he said, if you don't get back in that house, I'm going to slap you. And I'm like, no, you're not. And he hauled up and slugged me. And in that moment of time, I had to decide whether I was going to take my plastic bat out and beat that bastard boy to the floor because his mama didn't teach him what America's about and how the history and heritage of the black community got them out of that shit that they play with. And when I made the decision about under the guidance of the Lord was that I wasn't going to do that, but a white man stood there and watched the whole fucking thing who was cleaning that lot. And that pissed me off. They didn't do a fucking thing to report that child. But that same child was sleeping on the campus where Pastor Nate passes out food with the Muslims who are trying to fuck us all. And openly that boy sleeps on their porch. But that boy that morning decided to pound me down, beat me up, push me into a wall, shove me to the floor. Of course, I've just had a stroke in that period of time and my martial arts is not jumping to my mind. But at the same time, I was regarding my life, knowing the very factual thing that I decided the previous time he had hit me. So he's a predator to me, right? And basically, that I had to protect my head because it's my head that makes me a living. So I decided to cover my head while he's after and before around him, stomping with his foot in his tennis shoe on the back of my head, cracking my skull. I felt it crack. And I basically yelled, get the fuck off me. So as I continued my journey on campus, I rebuilt my little space there by picking up more things, trying to rebuild Christmas. But basically that... Uh, campus property management company ruined my Christmas, destroyed my relationship with the woman I love, who was about to come in that time, and she did. And I won't tell you the stories about that at this time. But what I can say to you is while I'm relating the story and I'm channeling these things that happened to me, that all the time I was being played with by the retail employees of lots of companies, and most of them were Hispanic. And I found some kindness in the Spoon House place, which is run by a, a nice gentleman named uh, a Korean man, and I would often go in there when I had enough cash, and I'd buy a marvelous Japanese Korean oriented meal, and then I would be nourished in my soul and nourished in my body. But generally speaking, people kind of played with me. I had a PVP uh, PVP manager who was a redhead whose name I forget at this time promised to make sure she donates some of their leftover breads to our ministry, but then I always got fucked around by the Hong Kong girls that worked there. And eventually that shop closed, but probably because there was a Muslim there who was kind of being a med manager and basically telling me off all the time. And that wasn't marvelous. I got played with by the manager at the, uh, I shouldn't say the company because I really love them, uh, but I will now, the Jimmy John shop. She'd play to be my friend and then she'd piss all of me at night, probably taking these from my pockets, looking at things that I didn't plan to show her. And openly, what I've found is in my life, in general, women with the name Ashley are players like that. But in life, if I relate my story, you don't want to believe that. But I've been asked to talk about some of the experiences I've had with Hispanics. There was a, a marvelous um, village pangeli type of place, and I'm probably getting a Circle K place, that I would go regularly in the morning to get hot water, and sometimes their employees would help me. But what would happen is that late at night, a uh, food truck, would sort of play with me. And so I basically let the corporation know through my executive privilege that there was a food truck on the property and I just wasn't sure they knew it. And what I felt was that that food truck was impeding the billions of dollars or millions of dollars of strategic alliances and profitable partnerships of the vendors of that shop because if the food truck was there, the kids would not buy the food of the store. Now that's just common sense, but that Hispanic manager didn't even know that or care that he wanted to provide his family management. So, but do you know what happened when they got kicked off the property, probably by the corporate office after my attempt to protect that company who I liked very much and has always been kind to me? That food truck moved down to where I was sleeping and literally kept creeping up on top of me to the point that every night my stuff was being played with by the Muslims and the Indians who come in to be students in our community. Or it was, or maybe it was the Hispanic women running the food truck. And they were parking two and three vehicles of several thousand tons of their food truck, plus their maybe manager who drive around in his white truck, 
on that property and that property has a fault line that is depressing and could cave in at any time so i apologize for sharing some of the stories but i was asked to share some of the stuff that has not been for god's glory but openly i don't need to be manipulated and what i also know is that many of the players from the shelter when i did stay there during a few of the freezing day rain a few of the freezing days when i first arrived to champagne and found later that they were basically molesting me taking things out of my pocket removing my court documents and literally playing with me by putting dirty socks into my luggage that I had gifted actually to a guy because he was bigger than me and the socks were too big for me. Why would I keep them if they're too big for me and I don't wear white type socks anyway? That some black lesbian woman gave to me at a church after they played in my bags at the church. But I can't get over how rude most people have been from churches and other organizations to a guy like me who's homeless and traveling and trying to get his life back. Now I may not have said all the things that the politician asked me to share about but what I can tell you is that a predominant amount of my abuses on campus came from Hispanics, Latinos, or Hardurans, whatever the hell they are, who do not speak the Lord's English, so it makes me feel that they don't belong here. And openly what I was seeing all the time, in particular JSN companies, that they were hiring these Hispanics, or maybe the Hispanics were pretending to work for the companies, and those Hispanics had so many keys on their belt that they were actually walking in and out of people's apartments. And I wondered, what the heck was that about? Because I didn't see them with anything more than a dustpan and a broom. And usually in American apartment culture, we don't allow that. And we don't need that. And we don't want that. So these are the things that I was seeing. These are the things that I was experiencing. And the other embarrassments and embellishments and attacks on my programs of trying to feed people like me came from the black community. And I'm sad for that. Because I'm a kid who grew up with his father requiring us to watch Roots. And understand the disparagement that American white men did to people of all colors, including Native Indians, to Americans. 